What's up everybody, my name is Josh. Uh, today we're looking at building a cabinet incubator. All right, so this here is the incubator. I built it to uh, kind of replicate a GQF cabinet incubator. Of course, it's not fully automatic. This is only semi-automatic. has a manual turning system, which is that easy. Just turn them from one side to another. That's the middle. Starting from the back, we have the rear access part to all the electronics and wiring. Here we've got our two fans for heating, our inkbird thermostat, fan button, our DC adapter for to power our fans, and then there you can see we've got our turner, which brings it up and down. And of course this can be modified to add an automatic turner as well. All right, so over here I've got our thermostat. Um, this one is an inkbird and we also have our fan controller. Coming around front, we have our front door with, this one has two latches from a set of four that I use two and two, one for the front door, one for the back door. And we've got our three racks. And now, like I said, these are controlled by this turner over here and they're all turning together as you can see that goes up and down and then up top we've got our humidity tray this is hooked up directly to the bucket up here we've got two fans over here and two more fans in the back along the heating element that's also the same one from the GQF incubators all right so I've got this thermometer here sitting all the way at the bottom of the incubator that's 29.6 degrees Celsius after we just opened it and actually I had it off for about an hour and I just turned it on right now so as you can see the temperatures are significantly lower but they are going up pretty quickly um, and even with this size of an incubator and just one heating element. On the inside, we can fit, as you can see, two egg racks. So in this case, I've got quail egg racks. And then you can actually, and then there's space enough to stack these. As long as you have eggs that are small enough to, to allow you to stack these racks, then it'll allow you to. So then you can fit a total of 12 quail egg racks in here for basically 1300 quail eggs at a time and then you do have space at the bottom if you wanted to throw in a hatcher um, but you don't have to all right now for measurements we have here this panel is 30 inches tall by 30 inches deep and we have two of these and we have the floor and the roof which are 30 inches deep and 17 and a half inches wide. These four pieces going around are the four most important pieces that you um, that you have to make. You can choose to add to shorten this and simply add a door on top if you don't want to have this door going towards the back, um, just for preference. But the rest of the cuts after this are all optional as well. So in the back here, you've got this access panel, which is 24 and three quarters inches tall and 17 and a half inches wide. And this here is six and three quarter inches tall and 17 and a half inches wide. The door up front is 31 and a half inches tall and 17 and a half inches wide once again. Now the reason that those numbers are is because I have three quarter inch MDF. If you go with a different thickness, then you will have different measurements or just based on whatever you're building. It's actually because I have three quarter inch MDF that I had trouble making uh, the holes for the buttons and switches and I didn't have a lot of great tools at that moment um, but that just goes to show I literally made this with a circular saw and a uh, drill so two tools and I was able to make this entire incubator um, semi-automatic now I do have more parts that I've already arrived and I'm gonna be building an automatic egg turner for this so that way we'll just have buttons on the Outside over here, we'll, we're going to be installing a control panel so that way we can go ahead and control the whole entire incubator just from that one area. And we'll be able to he'll go ahead and delete this and plug this hole at that time. While I'm here, as you saw here, this is for the manual egg turner. Like I was saying earlier, 
you can see it open from here. We've got all the electronics and heating element back here. I literally made this out of a Lowe's yardstick that costs about a dollar, I think. And then it just turns the eggs. Now this one, it crashes a little bit here, but the idea is when I add the automatic egg turner, I'll be able to install it here and it'll just turn this here stick up and down, up and down. And it'll be good to go. It'll just be controlled over here. As we all know, one of the most important things about uh, an incubator is how well it holds its temperature and humidity. Uh, in this case here, like I've said, I've got three quarter inch MDF and zero other insulation. Um, we have weather stripping on the edges of all the doors and that keeps it sealed enough. And either way, we don't need a full seal because we need to control humidity and temperatures. Right now I've been opening the incubator a lot. So we've got 31.1 degrees Celsius, which is around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And then this is the room temperature in here, the ambient temperature of 75.7 degrees and the humidity in the room. Obviously we can see that there's a big difference and even with me opening it this many times and without our humidity wicks, we've still got 70% humidity inside of the incubator. So we could be bringing it down, but uh, we're not. Now to be clear, this incubator does hold its temperature very well. Um, sometimes it's as cold as 50 degrees in the room and the incubator still holds its 100 degrees. It's just right now, um, like I mentioned earlier, I've had the incubator off for about an hour or two and uh, even then right now after I turned it on, I've been opening the door. For now, that's the introduction to my incubator here. I'll be making a more detailed incubator build video uh, about how to build one of these. Now, this one is here, here is a, has turners because it's incubator, but the next one I'll be building, it will be a hatcher. So it'll just have hatching trays, at least three. That way we can have two, two separate units, which is one for incubating and another one for hatching. Nonetheless, I'm still gonna be making a few videos about me building the hatcher, uh, building the automatic egg turner and just other things that go along with incubating eggs. Uh, especially because at the end of the day, I've seen a lot of videos out there and uh, they're just not exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, so I've just taken things here, here and there and uh, made them my own, uh, especially because I wanted a larger cabinet incubator and uh, I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on a GQF incubator. So I guess I'm cheap. If you plan on building an incubator like this, you'll just know that you'll probably spend around 250 to 300 dollars if you want to build just one uh, otherwise 400 to 500 dollars on two of them um, and the reason those numbers vary is because a lot of the things that you can that you buy for this on amazon you can get you will get in packs you will have leftover parts and they will be good for a future incubator or hatcher build or other things like that and lastly some of you might have noticed that this is my first youtube video um, if you found it useful or if you enjoyed it, just feel free to go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I plan on making more videos in the future about building stuff in general. I don't just build incubators. I like building all sorts of stuff. Uh, I like buying all sorts of stuff and uh, just doing stuff with it.